Day five, the dung gate. The name of this gate might more properly be called the ash heap or ash pit gate. Its name in Hebrew is Ashboat and sounds a bit like Ashbit. Unlike the previous gate that led to the Hinnom Valley, where things were destroyed that shouldn't have been destroyed, this gate leads to a place where things are destroyed that should be destroyed. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. Just as our bodies produce things that, we, that needs to be cast away, buried, and put out of sight, that is flushed, so our souls do likewise. Our souls produce thoughts, sights, words, and attitudes that must be jettisoned or they will produce great discomfort and damage to our spiritual health. The question here is, what damaging things are you retaining that need to be discarded from your life? Do you have an unhealthy and poisonous attitude that needs to go? You may not even realize that you have such an attitude if you don't take the time to honestly investigate. Likewise, are you harboring unforgiveness towards someone? How about jealousy or its opposite, arrogance? What thoughts have you picked up from the music you listen to or the programs that you watch or sermons that promote hatred, fear or pride? We are constantly taking in things from the culture around us and digesting them. But how healthy is your spiritual digestive system? Are you eliminating the things that can and will become poisonous? So many people have no idea that they are filled with poisonous thoughts and attitudes. Their spiritual ill health is so complacent to them that they think it's normal. They can't imagine people who are free from such things. On the other hand, many people are troubled by their own thoughts and attitudes, but don't know how to eliminate them properly. So they just purge their spiritual ways on those around them. They talk about things that are inappropriate to share. They spew their hateful attitudes on others and vent their poisonous words to anyone who will listen. But as the master said, it is the things that come out of us that, are, that defile the person. Imagine a home without a toilet and the occupants, ju occupants just, well, you get the picture. This reminds me of a song. Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam and I'll show you a house full of mud. Truth be told, all of us have been in such homes that are filled with a stench of defilement. The spiritual atmosphere reeks of harsh, selfish and hateful words between family members. We each need a dungate in our lives where we can go and privately confess and eliminate from our lives those things that don't belong. A place where we can be quiet and alone and free ourselves of the things that will destroy us if we keep them in. The Torah commanded the Israelites to practice good hygiene as they traveled through the wilderness. Among its instructions was this, and you shall have a tent peg among your tools. And it shall be when you sit down outside, you shall dig with it and shall turn to cover up your excrement. If they must deal properly with their excrement while in the wilderness, how much more so when living in the holy city? Some people live in such a way that the dung heap is their home. They think that their life among spiritual waste matter is normal. Serious states of depression can make anyone think that the dung heap is where they belong. Just ask Job. God knows this, and even in depths of uncleanness, he still holds out hope. Consider this. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap, Ashport, to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. The Dungate is mentioned again in Nehemiah. Near the end of chapter 12, we read about the dedication of Jerusalem's rebuilt walls and gates. Nehemiah calls all, to the, calls all the Levites from the land of Israel, along with the leaders of Judah, to come to Jerusalem for the sacred celebration. You can read the entire account for yourself, but look at how the celebration begins. Then I had the leaders of Judah come up on top of the wall, and I appointed two great choirs, the first proceeding to the right on top of the wall towards the dung gate. Doesn't this seem like an unusual place to begin such a celebration? When you give someone a tour of your home, you don't begin with the bathroom. But if you think about it, 
Is there any room in your house that provides a clearer picture of your hygiene than the bathroom? So the question is, what is the state of spiritual hygiene in your home? Spend some time asking yourself, what are the things you are tolerating in your home that should be thrown out the dung gate? How clean are the programs you watch, the books you read, the music you listen to? How clean is the language you use when no one is around? What are the things you are hiding that, if revealed to your faith community, would bring you shame? There's just one thing you can do. Don't forget to flush. Father, thank you that we can come before you in the name of Yeshua and that we can ask, Father, that you will please help us to get rid of the things in our souls that needs to be destroyed. Father, help us to have an honest view of our spiritual house and our spiritual health. Open our eyes to any dung heaps that we need to deal with. Help us to remove the secret sins, our thoughts, sights, words, and attitudes from our souls. Remove any hatred, fear, and pride from among our hearts and help us to not become complacent with the state of our dung heap. Amen. Amen.